Hi, I'm Mike Hanley. I'm the editor of Rack Magazine, live in Montgomery, Alabama. Rack Magazine is published by Buckmasters. Um, I got into journalism officially in 1980 as the cub reporter for a weekly newspaper in Sumter County, Alabama. I went to uh, Livingston University. It was now, now known as the University of West Alabama. Back in 1979, uh, friend of mine named John Phillips suggested that I consider that option uh, since he's an alumni of that place and uh, I went down there and took a summer job joined the weekly newspaper and I've been doing it ever since I've been in the business for 35 years 18 years in the newspaper business 17 years in my current capacity as editor of Wright magazine uh, it, it's been a, a fun ride and a day doesn't pass when I don't think about you know, how I got started um, working as a cub reporter. And every time I start thinking about the good old days, I remember some of the bad things that happened. So uh, I'm kind of glad to be to have landed where I'm landed now. Tell us what, what advice you'd have for somebody who wants to get into the outdoor writing business. A lot of people ask me. Uh, Rarely a month goes by when I don't have to answer this question at least twice. A lot of kids, even grown uh, men and women, wonder how they can pursue their passion of the outdoors and the love of the outdoors, whether it's hunting or fishing, and turn it into a career. And basically it requires the same thing that it requires of anybody getting into any sort of journalism. Just because one likes to hunt or fish doesn't mean jack in terms of your being able to get a job. You need a marketable skill. You need to be able to write, a command of the language. It helps if you can edit um, and, and be wear many hats in this business. The more hats you can wear, the better. If you're fluent with, with the Internet and uh, all things web, you'll have a leg up on all the competition. It'll help if you can master or are the master of a digital camera and can supply your own images. And you need a lot of lucky breaks because there are a lot of people out there right now in this market who started out in journalism or who are looking for jobs and they've settled for something far less. So it, the, the skill set is what's going to set you apart. So you have to take English seriously. You have to take writing seriously. You need to be a voracious reader. If you hope to be a really great writer and set yourself apart, you need to read a lot and learn to recognize some of the skills that other writers have. And finally, you need to be a hard worker and apply yourself. If you're not a hard worker, if you don't just push forward and, and butt your head against that wall, you know, you'll never make it because it's going to be a lot of hard work that's that's more enjoyable than it is lucrative. Mike, you're also an artist. Tell us how that, how that got started and what you do with your art. I've, uh, that's true. I, I'm, a, I'm an editor by day and an artist by night. I paint with acrylics now. But when I was a, uh, a little boy, I used to draw all the time. In fact, when I was 12 years old, I was working at John Phillips Taxidermy Shop and uh, John influenced me in many ways, not only to go to Livingston University, but he asked me to illustrate one of his first books, 50 Ways to Make More Money in Taxidermy, which I did largely on his kitchen table in Fairfield, Alabama. And I still have a copy of that book. And uh, it was lots of fun, but I gave up almost all artwork as I grew older and didn't paint anything, didn't draw anything. And then I went on safari in South Africa in 2001. I've been there three times, but that was the first time. And I was so blown away by everything I saw out there. Uh, every flora, fauna, just absolutely everything. I mean, the, the safari would come to a screeching halt so that I could lie on the dirt on my belly and watch a dung beetle do its work. Uh, to see an ostrich or a giraffe or these magnificent animals out there in the wild was just heart stopping and one of the things that we did in safari camp was uh, one night a traveling troop of AIDS orphans from Johannesburg 
came to, dressed in, in uh, tribal type costumes, came to dance and sing for us around the campfire. And I was so moved by that presentation, everybody was, there wasn't a dry eye around the fire, that uh, when I got back to the States, the, one of the first things I did was go out and buy canvases and brushes and easels because I had just about run out of everything. Uh, you know, that what, If I had anything left, it was dried up and unusable. So I bought all of these things and I wanted to paint the, the orphans dancing around the fire. And that was right after the safari in 2001, and, and I have been painting ever since. And have since won many awards, have several book covers, magazine covers. And wildlife is now primarily what I paint, though I enjoy painting many other things.